Hello and welcome back to ML News. Today we're going to go over several things that happened in industry during the last week. The first one, Microsoft planning to spend a hundred billion dollars on a supercomputer to power OpenAI models. Microsoft, notably being the sugar daddy of OpenAI, is now apparently in talks to build an even bigger supercomputer for OpenAI. Now this is all people familiar with the matter and there are talks and so on and however a hundred billion dollars is a little bit bigger than previous projects were. This article by Fortune goes into a bit of back and forth about it with critics saying something and then Microsoft must be thinking something but one argument that I find to be good is saying okay if Microsoft actually invests this much then it can only be worth it if it's in fact AGI. The only way a single model, OpenAI model, could justify such an outlandish investment on a single data center, they said, was if the model were in fact AGI. However, Microsoft has to hope that whatever Stargate is being used for is in fact not to train AGI, since Microsoft's partnership with OpenAI only entitles the tech chain to commercialize OpenAI's technology that falls short of AGI. So OpenAI has in their uh, charter, I believe, or in their deal with Microsoft, they say, okay, you get to have everything we have except once we've invented AGI. And we say when we've invented AGI. So is the $100 billion data center a fiction or not? Who knows? It's all people familiar with the matter say. However, what I believe is that when finally OpenAI announces that they have reached AGI, it will be such an underwhelming moment. They'll just say it out of some political or money maneuvering. <laughs> it will still be like, oh, okay, it can write really nice emails or something like this, right? They'll have some arbitrary metric where they can say justify like, oh, by our metric, this is now AGI. It will be completely underwhelming. I'm not saying we're never going to reach something like AGI or something that people today would consider AGI. What I am predicting is that the moment OpenAI says they've reached AGI will be absolutely underwhelming. Stability AI has made a big change, namely the founder and CEO or now ex-CEO Emad Mustak has resigned from being CEO of Stability AI. Stability is transitioning, finding new CEO while Emad is moving on, saying that he is going to make sure that AI remains open and decentralized. Imad looking for new adventures outside after having founded Stability AI. We're all excited to see what Stability AI will continue to do. Notably, the company has gone through different phrases. They obviously came out initially with very strong models like Stable Diffusion, gathering a lot of attention, being overtly open source, then later shifting strategy to the more open weight strategy we see from other companies nowadays where you can use the models for personal use and up to a certain limit but then once you use them commercially you have to pay them money which you know fair companies have to make money and they're still on the forefront of research with Stable Diffusion XL being incredibly capable model but the future of Stability AI is as of now unknown and uncertain and we're excited to see what Emad is going to do next. Shortly after releasing the weights of Grok 1, fully open, and I mean fully, fully open, now Twitter has announced their new model, Grok 1.5. They say it comes with improved reasoning capabilities and a context length of 128,000 tokens. This is going to be available on X soon. They don't say too much more, but they do release some numbers where you can see that the model does favorably compare with sort of current models that are around. It's not the best model ever around. However, it holds itself pretty well. And notably, it's a definite improvement over Grok 1. And with long context understanding goes up to 128,000 tokens. I have to say that token lengths are kind of getting insane. And it's pretty excited to see what these models are going to be able to do once people really get the hang of how to use this long context well. Also, in some news, I have been verified on Twitter. I didn't pay for this. 
they just gave it to me. Yeah, it's still the same. I just have this thing. Also, they didn't verify my personal information. This could have been an imposter all the time. And anyway, I now have actually access to the Grok model on Twitter. So when 1.5 comes out, if I notice, I will notify you. OpenAI has released a blog post called Navigating the Challenges and Opportunities of Synthetic Voices. They detail their first experiments of what they call Voice Engine, which is a model for creating custom voices. Custom voices has been a thing for a while and I have never been able to really distinguish quality because quality of these has gotten so incredibly high. But this model is another one in the series where you give text input and a single 15 second audio sample of a speaker. You put them together and then you will have a natural sounding voice that sounds like the 15 second sample but reads the text that you give it. They have a few examples right here which you can listen listen to but Honestly, these blog posts, they're always phrased in the couched in the language of safety. We're releasing a small preview now. Oh, we're we're committed to safety and so on. This is an ad. Like, let's be real. This is an ad. <laughs> this is like this is like a teaser, a trailer for their upcoming model. This is nothing else. They don't say anything of importance here and they try to couch it in safety. You know how like every perfume and fashion brand and so on, they're just trying to couch whatever they do in the sense of lifestyle. This is the same like they're just trying to use safety as a means of delivering an ad to you. OpenAI, where is Elia? <laughs> they also release a blog post called Sora First Impressions. And this is pretty cool. They release kind of what people have been doing with Sora. This is called Airhead, which they feature on top. It's about a person with a balloon as a head. And uh, it's still clunky to make movies with Sora. You can see that all the shots are kind of you know, these kind of sort of panoramic. Um, it works for some movies, but I think it get old pretty, pretty quickly if you just did that. But it's already cool to see that essentially the model itself is a foundation for art. It's fun. It's fun. You can watch the other movies as well. They have some again on, on this blog post. Uh, they've also released them on their YouTube channel. Also, OpenAI says we're partnering with a small group of US builders to test usage based GPT earnings. Our goal is to create a vibrant ecosystem where builders are rewarded for their creativity and impact. And we look forward to collaborating with builders on the best approach to get there. Again, OpenAI trying to become the platform here. So if you create a GPT, which is essentially sort of like a bit of a prompt flow, you can earn money if other people use that. It's like an app store and they've announced this already previously that they would do this and now they say they're experimenting in a small scale how that's going to work. It's going to be difficult because GPTs or LLM programs, they're essentially completely transferable. There's nothing to do a big vendor lock-in to any particular LLM. So you can just take the same and go somewhere else, go to Claude or go to wherever. It's going to be interesting to see how these companies are attempting to introduce some sort of ecosystem lock-in or some sort of vendor lock-in with these technologies. Ultimately, language as an interface is just by its nature universal and also open AI. Where's Elia? Also Jensen Huang casually dropping at GTC that OpenAI's newest model has 1.8 trillion parameters and required 30 billion quadrillion flops to train. <laughs> at this point, they're just making up numbers, don't they? They just be like, how many flops do you need? Well, how about 30 billion quadrillion? <laughs> Sounds like an evil villain asking for way too much ransom money, but I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and believe that that's the actual number. And lastly, Thomas Wolf has released a talk on how to build large language models in 2024 called A Little Guide to Building LLMs in 2024. You can see the, a recording of the talk, the topics that are covered very, very cool and go into modern LLM training, including like how to evaluate and prepare training data, how to do parallelism to train effectively and so on. Talk is on YouTube, slides are available. Excellent. Thank you, Thomas, for releasing this. All right, that was it. Mostly stuff going on in industry and honestly, mostly stuff going on at OpenAI because without Ilya, they can now freely make money. I'll see you around.